and welcome to this video on the Trek Report feature. So far in this tutorial series, we've studied the measures graph, we've studied GPS positioning, we've studied how to create a track map, and looked at all sorts of different ways of being able to visualize data. But one of the ones we want to be able to have a look at today is to be able to look at some of the additional features uh, that are available in terms of understanding uh, how you're doing at a certain point on track, but with different references. And so we do that using the track report feature. And what we're going to focus on today is we're going to look at GPS speed and we're going to look at latitudinal acceleration. So far in our series, we've studied longitudinal acceleration where we've talked about down being braking and up being accelerating. However, latitudinal acceleration talks about left and right hand turns and it also measures this in g-force and so it gives you a great way of being able to identify just how much force you're putting on the car uh, in the corners to be able to identify if you are indeed using all of um, the grip capability and the car's potential in certain points or at certain points on track and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at it uh, in this uh, new view now at the top here you've got all of these different menus and we've studied a few of them um, already for these this uh, tutorial series but what we're going to do is we're going to click on this icon up here it looks like a map with a flag on it called the track report feature I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up this view that is going to show uh, in a, a blended uh, color theme uh, certain pieces of information on track. And so before I explain how I set this up, let's just talk about what we're looking at here. What I've done is I've gone in and I've said I want to be able to see for the sectors that I've created. If you remember at the beginning of our um, tutorial series, we talked about creating a map. Um, and um, if we look in Map Manager, we've got this one set up with three sectors. This is the one that we're using right now as part of this uh, track report feature. And what we're looking at here is we're looking at certain variables in each of the sectors. So what's the fastest speed in the sector? Um, what's the lowest speed uh, also in the sector? And what are the uh, maximum and minimum g-forces in terms of corner potential? That allows us to be able to start looking at certain pieces of information that may be useful. Plus, the color coding gives us an indication. Blue is slowest because we're measuring speed uh, on the actual map, and red is fastest with a variation of colors therein. So as you can see here, we're still measuring lap 12 and lap 8, which we've had consistently through the series. Um, you can find those laps if you click on the space bar and the same menu bar pops up that we've talked about uh, and used in a series of different videos that are there. So what we want to be able to have a look at is what are we seeing? And so um, later on in this tutorial series, we'll look at um, analyzing the data. But if you remember just quickly from the measures graph, uh, we were going to look at um, turn one as a great example of where the red bar here or the red line or the red lap is faster through turn one to the tune of nearly three tenths of a second. Um, we've looked at GPS positioning to be able to see if it was uh, a position on track. We've also got the opportunity now of being able to see what that looks like in terms of speed. So the red lap, which if we go back to reference, is the 1 minute 5.698 and the 1 minute 5.7.69 is in blue. We can see that uh, through turn one, the red lap um, is carrying more speed. And you can see the minimum speed on the red lap, colored red here, is 90.6 using 1.29 g-forces, whereas uh, 87.5 uh, for the blue lap with slightly less usage um, in terms of corner force. So this is a really useful reference to be able to get an idea in terms of how you're doing in each of the corners and be able to reference different laps and study different pieces of information. But now you may be wondering, how did I set this up? Well, not only did I load up the track report feature here, but I have also customized it for the view that I like. So I'm going to talk you through that right now. On this screen, best thing to do is just right click. And if you right click, now you're going to see uh, a lot of information in terms of configuring this. On the left hand side, you've got all your channels. We're using an AIM Solo 2 for the channels we have here, so predominantly GPS-based data. But if you've got any of the more advanced AIM solutions, you may be able to see a lot more channels that are there. Again, all viable for this track report feature. Um, what we've got here is we've asked for a minimum and a maximum to be shown, plus a reference channel. And the reference channel is an extra channel that you'll see as part of this analysis. If you turn this one off, all you would see is the track representation, which is speed, but we just want to see a little bit more here. Um, on this box here, we've got the representation and we've said speed. It could be any of these options, but speed makes sense. We'd like a smooth line that blends the colors. You could have it in chunks, but I actually like the, the, the smoothing of that. That's something to uh, play around with. 
And if you wanted to, you could divide it into the segments of the actual lap itself or the map that you've created. Again, I like it to be a smooth uh, colored representation that is there. So that's going to give me the speed and it's going to show me minimum and maximum around the track. But I also want a reference channel, something else that I can look into and be able to analyze. So um, I've also got the reference channel that is here and I've asked for GPS lateral acceleration, again, measured in G-forces in a particular point uh, on the track. So I've referenced and I've selected that. And then lastly, I've asked if the reference channel, uh, the measures information should be shown. That's this actual box that's here, uh, which you can turn on and off if you um, may want uh, additional screen real estate or want to be able to look at uh, different variables that are on there. Once you've set all of this up, all you need to do at that point is click apply and exit. Uh, and then all of a sudden now you have your setup that is here. Now, a few areas and tips in terms of using the track report feature. The first is don't try and analyze too many laps because all of a sudden the screen becomes a lot busier and it's harder to be able to see the laps overlaying against each other. I can give you an example here by going into the laps and adding an additional lap and you can see that all of a sudden it uh, starts to get a little bit busier. So I personally like to use just two for a reference point of view and that's the first piece of advice. The second thing is you set up your uh, track report feature to be able to think about is how many segments you use. If, for example, you happen to be using multiple segments, here we're using a map that has three, um, we can see just the three sectors. But if we go back to this map that's got more than that, and I can load it for the open segments, now the same data is being displayed, but across a lot more of those segments that were created by AIM in terms of left and right hand turns. Again, a useful feature if you wanted to be able to see minimum corner speed and break down each of the corners. But at the same time, as you can probably see here, it does get a little bit busy. So. This feature works particularly well with simplified information. And so I'm going to go back to the map manager that is here. I'm going to go back to the three sectors that we created in a previous video. Uh, video. We're going to load for open tests. And again, we go back to that simplified view. So I know now for sector one, which is from start finish all the way down here before maggots, I am going uh, through this corner slightly better with more force. I can now compare that to the GPS view to be able to see, did the line allow me to take a little bit more speed? And similarly also to be able to study additional information because one of the things that we also notice is that the blue lap as we come down here um, to exit onto the uh, front straightaway, we notice that uh, the blue line is actually taking more um, speed uh, through that corner. But interestingly, the red is actually using slightly less, um, a slightly more g-force. And so that might be a tighter line that's holding the car up. It's it's bound up and, and can't release and, and, and find that speed. So we'll look at that in an analysis video. But this is the track report feature, which I highly recommend if you want to be able to look at some simple variables very quickly, cleanly on a map with a nice visual layout. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.